Don't let the idea that, oh, I could catch a dick no matter how big I am, cause you to forget about your health and to keep gaining weight. Hello, YouTube, and welcome to the Body Honesty Project. My name is Lydia, and today I am doing something that I have never done before, and that is inserting myself into internet drama. Now, many of you have probably already seen the viral TikTok by Gabrielle Lasano, where she talks about the truth about being fat and how it's not all it's cracked up to be. And boy, did this TikTok get all the fat talkers mad. Since the posting of that TikTok, so, so, so many videos have been made. Other TikTokers have stitched that TikTok and YouTubers have clipped that TikTok and inserted it into their videos. Now, I've been following a particular thread where a fat talker commented on Gabrielle's TikTok. Then one of our own, Megan Ann, made a YouTube about that TikToker commenting on Gabrielle. Then that TikToker came back and made another TikTok commenting on Megan. Well, I'm gonna make a video commenting on the commenter commenting on Megan who's commenting on Gabrielle. So there's a whole lot of layers of meta going on here, but I just wanted to include my voice into the equation. Now, the original TikTok has been taken down, but there are enough clips of that TikTok in this video that you'll get a general idea of what was said in it. So why don't we just jump right on in? As you can see, my video has made its rounds and a YouTuber named Megan Ann posted a response, not just to my video, but to a lot of other creators' videos. And so I'm just gonna break it down. Her response to my video starts out saying that she agrees that no one thinks it's trendy to be fat and people don't come into the space wanting to get more fat. And then this is what she says afterwards. I do think people go into the body positivity movement only for it to turn into the fat acceptance movement. Um, but they're really just looking for a place to like commiserate over body image issues. So Megan, you're saying we come into this space in order to commiserate over body image issues. Most of the reason why we're upset about Gabriella's videos is because we want to be able to exist without us or other people seeing our bodies as issues. I think the point was missed here. We know that fat acceptance discusses a lot of things around fat activism. However, the people that get into fat acceptance don't always get there from wanting to fight for fat people's rights. People get in there from all sorts of avenues, and what Megan said about looking for a place to commiserate is not untrue. People get there from trying to heal their relationship with food, or looking for plus-sized fashion, or looking for travel tips when plus-sized. Then they find their way down the body-positive rabbit hole and poof, they end up in fat acceptance. Here's two examples of two popular fat activists that did not get there by seeking out fat activism. Splotchmaker was looking for plus-sized fashion. And the fat positive therapist, well, she was looking at intuitive eating. I realized it was okay to be fat when I saw other people okay with being fat. And not just being okay with it, but actively trying not to change it and living their life to the fullest. They had belly lines and big stomachs and big arms and they didn't care. From there, I unfollowed all of the weight loss pages and I just followed a whole bunch of fat creators, which then led me into following people into fat liberation which then got me interested in fat liberation and fat positivity, you know, true body positivity. And then I started following people that posted infographics, you know, disproving all of these things I had thought that were fact. And I was presented with new information that I just hadn't had before because the world's fat phobic and doesn't want you to realize that you can be fat and be fine. So I've been thinking about the intuitive eating to fat liberation pathway or pipeline, whatever, however you want to call it, and why so many of us like advocates or creator content creators go from kind of aligning with the intuitive eating space and then get to the fat liberation space. And I think it's really interesting because, you know, I started with intuitive eating. I'm a certified intuitive eating counselor. Uh, I wanted to make peace with food. I wanted to stop dieting. And then with that knowledge, you learn how systemic oppression 
of fat people is so problematic. And then you keep learning about how you can't really control your body's size and it's all genetic. And then you keep learning even more about how our society just punishes fat people and supports thin people regardless of if they're healthy or not. And then you learn how, how much healthism exists in our society and morality somehow it ties into health. And then you're left with leave fat people alone, let them live their life and they deserve proper health care. So neither of them were looking for it, but that's where they ended up, which is exactly what Megan was saying. They weren't looking to become fat activists, but they fell into it along with all of its rhetoric. I think she's just more so angry that like nobody talks about the negative effects of being fat. So this shows that you do want us to be talking about body image issues. You want us to be talking about our bodies as an issue. You don't want us to be talking about how we can get free. You want us to be talking about how we should live in fear. When did Megan say you have to live in fear? Did she even say you need to dwell on the negative? I think that all we're asking for here is a well-rounded, complete picture. A picture that shows the positive and the negative so that we get the whole picture. It is dishonest to only share the good and shield your audience from the bad. What if I told you that I have a product that can reduce stress, reduce hypertension, cut the risk of developing Parkinson's by 41%, and also helps control your appetite. Should I be able to go onto the internet and tout the virtues of this product and only the virtues? Now, what if I told you that this product is cigarettes? All those things are true about cigarettes. Am I still allowed to go on and talk about all the virtues of this product? Or do I owe it to my audience to also talk about the side effects? You know, a little known thing called lung cancer. Now, does everybody that smoke get lung cancer? No. And do people that have never smoked also get lung cancer? Yes. But does smoking increase your risk of getting lung cancer? Yes. So it's not very honest to talk about the virtues of smoking while intentionally leaving out the negative consequences of higher risk of developing lung cancer. And people are not asking the fat acceptance community to shut up about the positive parts of fat acceptance, only acknowledge the negatives. Because people should have a complete picture in order to make an informed decision. And then they just proceed to be fed like all these really like harmful narratives and like very, and like messages that they weren't looking for. Harmful narratives and messages we weren't looking for? You mean like this one? I'm gonna say something controversial and I don't care. I don't care how trendy or cute or fun it seems to be fat. Don't let that shit fuck with your head. I think no, I think that the messages that people weren't looking for were more like this. If you are losing weight because you want to feel better, be in less pain, be healthier, all of these, these things, that's half of it. Okay. Fat doesn't put pressure on your heart. It's a common misconception that knee pain is caused by being fat. As for blood pressure, there's no evidence that being fat causes high blood pressure. Oh my god, enough with the fat around the organs. That is not a real thing. It is made up. It's the nonsensical stuff that 10 years ago, people never would have had the gall to say, especially on the internet. The stuff about obesity being healthy and it doesn't pose any risk to your health. The stuff about everything being fat phobic and it's even fat phobic to want to take care of yourself and lose weight. This rhetoric has painted the members of the fat acceptance community into a corner that they cannot escape from because if they do try to take care of themselves, they will be ostracized. Which means losing the only friends and support network that they have. And I'm not exaggerating. If you do choose to lose weight, you will be ostracized. When one of your favorite fat creators starts posting about their weight loss journey. Oh no, there's Melanie. That's a shame, she's really nice. ...saying that the reason she feels the movement has like gone too far is because now she's experiencing those negative harmful side effects herself. A lot of people in defense of Gabriella keep saying she's only talking about herself. It's not you guys' fault because the video is deleted, but Megan, you do have the whole video saved. I see a lot of fat girls who gain a lot of weight from being caught up in this movement. No amount of Instagram pictures looking cute and being an influencer wearing a size whatever you are is going to stop your heart from not beating if you eat bacon every day. 
this is the only part of the video where she actually talked about herself. And this is coming from someone who's learning those fucking, those, those, those lessons now, myself. The rest of it was clearly projecting, and that's the part that's harmful. If you come on here and you're talking about your own personal health issues, no one's gonna come and say, no, you're healthy, you're not having any issues, that's not actually real. No one's gonna say that. Nobody knows your body the way that you do, and vice versa. Projecting that message onto the entire fat community perpetuates the idea that if one of us is unhealthy, all of us are unhealthy. And if we're unhealthy, we're unhealthy for the same reason. If she would have centered the video around herself and what she's going through, everything would have been different. This is not the first time that Gabriella talked about weight loss, but this is the first time that she's had to hand out blocks like Halloween candy, because now you have all of our names in your mouth and for what? Now, I agree that Gabrielle should be allowed to tell her personal story, but I'm not going to stop there. I have no issue whatsoever with her addressing a community at large. None whatsoever. Because to me, she is not projecting. She is providing anecdotal evidence to something that is already backed by science. She is not telling a quirky story where something odd happened to her and she's projecting that that might happen to you. Let's go back to the smoking example. What if someone who has lung cancer and has a breathing tube were to go onto TikTok and make a video about the consequences of smoking? Using their personal story as evidence as what can happen if you continue to smoke. Should other smokers get angry? Should they say that that's not true? Not all smokers get lung cancer. Hey, other people that don't smoke also get lung cancer. Stop painting us with the same brush. You're adding stigma to smoking. Or should they accept that that person is speaking facts? And even if you don't like what they're saying, you have to admit that it's true. Gabrielle shared a personal story, but that personal story is backed by science. So to me, this is not projection. It's an example of consequence. On the rabbit hole of the creator that like singled out Jordan. Now she's referring to Sydney and this. Are you really gonna sit here and tell me obese people aren't as big as you think they are when, cause when I look at this photo, um, what? I'm not saying that you have to look like the two women on the left, but there is something clearly wrong with the woman on the right. Not saying that she's not worthy and deserving of love because she is, but she's unhealthy. She can hardly fit in her freaking shoes. I am so confused. Why on earth would we promote people walking around and looking like this? It's not healthy. And it's honestly mean to say that someone is beautiful and all this stuff when it's like we're literally lying to them and making them think that it's okay to be that way when it's really not because it's hurting their health and it's shortening their lives. If you really care about people, you tell them the truth. The TikTok that I showed you where she's like, this person's not beautiful. And I think she would have said those things regardless if Gabriella made this video or not. Um, she has some interesting takes. <laughs> so that phobia is interesting now. Never once did she say that Sydney was wrong or she was hateful or anything bad about her take. Just that's interesting and ha ha ha. To not denounce that level of fat phobia makes me think, no, tells me that you're also very loudly fat phobic yourself. Yeah. I am fat phobic. I am proudly fat phobic. I am fat phobic in the sense that I do not want to be fat and I do not think that being fat is healthy. I am not fat phobic in the sense that I think it's appropriate to bully fat people. And I'm also not fat phobic in the sense that I am afraid of fat people. But I see nothing wrong in advocating for health. If Sydney's TikTok was fat phobic, well, it was positively fat phobic. And I don't disagree with anything that she said. She said the truth where it's harmful to support and encourage a person to be unhealthy. And that's exactly what this picture does. For those of you who remember, 20, 30 years ago, we had cigarette ads in magazines. And now we don't because smoking is not a healthy lifestyle and we should not be depicting it in our advertisements. This is the same principle here. And I know it wasn't nice to say that we shouldn't be telling this person that they're beautiful, but 
Would you tell a meth addict that they have beautiful teeth? Would you tell a smoker that they smell oh so good? Why are we lying to people? I'm not saying we should bully them, but feeding them these lies will encourage them to stay in the situation that they are in. We are literally killing them with kindness. I don't think Gabriella was trying to exclude disabled people or people with medical conditions or whatever. She was talking about her own experience. So she's saying the fat acceptance community doesn't talk enough about the negative sides of being fat, but then keeps defending Gabriella saying that this is her own personal experience, da da da. What if we don't have our own personal experiences with the negative side of being fat? Or what if we do and we don't want to share because it's personal? Do you want people without these so-called fat-related health issues to just pretend that it's a looming threat over the rest of their lives just to satisfy your narrative? And do you want people who do have health issues to issue out generalized statements? Everybody's bodies, lives, habits, genetics, incomes, relationships with food, everything are completely different. And once again, we are twisting and stretching Megan's words. All we're asking for is some honesty all the way around. And that means speaking of the positive as well as the negative. Here are some examples of what I'm talking about from the fit community. The absolute truth about bodybuilding and being this shredded that most people won't tell you. So it's not healthy or sustainable to be this lean year round. Why? Because you're gonna feel like a bag of ass. Your body requires a lot more calories to function and it'll start taking things like your hair. You'll get hair loss, muscle loss over time. It can also jack up your hormones, good times. This physique is not maintainable. Let's, let's start there. I was probably around 12 to 15% body fat here. Although it looks cool and impressive, it's not healthy or sustainable for 99.99% of women. Videos like that that represent the ugly side of bodybuilding. That it's unsustainable, that the diet is so strict it might make your hair fall out, that you get angry and grumpy and it's just not healthy. Those are the ugly hard facts about bodybuilding. Now, all of those creators also make positive content about bodybuilding how it makes them feel, how it makes them strong, and how it makes them look, all the good stuff. But it would be dishonest of them to not also comment on the bad stuff. That's all we're asking for. If you're telling us all the good things, you should also share with us the bad things. And if you were so confident that what you're doing is good, you wouldn't need to shield your audience from the bad things. But anyway, this is where it gets funny and absurd and also sad. And I've always found the topic of the food price comparisons really interesting. And I always did kind of agree with that because for a certain, for a point there, healthier foods were more expensive. But now a carton of eggs is $7 and a McDonald's meal is like 10 <laughs> So it's like really starting to kind of even out. Honestly, if you're trying to save money, the carton of eggs would be a better option because it'll feed you longer. It's fucking hilarious, but also really sad. And it makes me want to cry because I'm a cancer rising and I'm a fucking crybaby. Who want people who don't have money to replace a meal, a burger with cheese and lettuce and tomatoes and onions, maybe even bacon with a side of fries and a drink and a cookie for eggs. This is the real negative side of being fat because people are teaching us eating disorders and encouraging us and praising us for eating disorders. That is so dark and people also openly being classist. You don't get to eat a meal because you're poor and fat. Why do we have to be so freaking literal? The price comparison here should not have been a meal and a carton of eggs. Like you're actually going to eat a carton of eggs instead of a meal. This is stupid. We should have been comparing the cost overall. Like I could buy a carton of eggs and a loaf of bread and a package of bacon and fruit for the same as two or three value meal. And that amount of groceries will make several meals. That should be the comparison. We should not be comparing the cost of one meal to one grocery. Add up all the money that you spend in a week on fast food and see what you can get for the same amount in groceries. That is the comparison. And no matter how you slice it, it's always cheaper to do groceries. It just is. Yes, it's less convenient, but it certainly is possible. Don't believe me? Check out my food parenting video. 
I'm getting really sick of this narrative because if you are over 400 pounds, there is no way that you are dirt poor and are getting to be that size. There is no way. You need to eat a certain amount of food to maintain that weight, and that food isn't free. So many of these fat activists spend a ton of money on food, but they will never come on camera and admit it. This last part coming up is in response to another creator's video, and I'll tag them, who is basically bringing up medical injustices and barriers that are obstacles to people's health. Like, yes, all of those things are very valid things to talk about in the medical system, very valid concerns, but just because all of those things exist does not mean we shouldn't talk about other things that exist. Megan, you could literally flip-flop this point around on yourself just because these issues that are over-talked about in fat communities towards fat people exist. They exist. No one said they, didn't, they don't exist. Doesn't mean that's all we have to talk about. And it made me realize we do talk about health a lot in the fat, ex fat acceptance community. I learned certain tools to make sure that doctors take me seriously, to decline to be weighed, to ask them to put things in my chart if they decline to run a test that they would run on a thin person. The plus size clothing company that I used to work for sent out an entire newsletter and also put it on their site for fat people to teach us how to advocate for ourselves against medical fat phobia so we can get the care that we need and deserve. We talk about health a fucking lot, just not the way that you want us to. For that one, I didn't even need to search for the supporting TikTok clips because you spilled it all yourself. You don't speak of the negatives that come with being fat. You only speak of the negatives that are about how you're treated because you were fat which would be like a smoker complaining that they can't smoke inside or that their doctor is always on their case to quit smoking while glossing over chronic cough, shortness of breath, yellow teeth, oh, and the potential to get lung cancer. The only negatives that are discussed are the negatives that are being done to them, not the negative behaviors that they are doing to themselves. And to me, that's not very honest. But not all reactions on TikTok have been negative. In fact, there have been quite a few positive ones, like this one. And my point is, is that I see a lot of fat girls who gain a lot of weight from being caught up in this movement and turning around five, six, seven years later talking about, damn, I let my health go to shit. I got this problem now. I'm 400 pounds. I can't do this. I can't do that. Babe, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Being attractive, being able to still wear nice clothes. So it's amazing. It took me 43 years to realize what the hell she's saying. 43 years. Do you know the years I've wasted on that? To realize it's about the health. And the worst part is I worked so hard on trying to work on my self-esteem, my confidence on what people thought about me, where it got to a point where I didn't care what people thought about me, right? But 43 years. When I should have in reality been focused on my health, not on other people's opinions on me, not anything of that. Sorry. But yeah, 43 years. It took me 43 years to realize that until January 16th, 2022, I said, that's it. I have to make a change. And I've been making that change. I've been making that change slowly, bit by bit. And I have no regrets, no regrets. I'm loving the choices I've been making because I'm down 70 pounds, you know? And the problem is we have people who like to coddle us and not keep it 100% real because yes, just because I'm overweight doesn't mean I'm ugly, but it's a serious health issue. And when you're in your 20s, yeah, you don't feel it. Early 30s, you can still get away with it. But once you hit those late 30s, early 40s, that's when everything starts to really come into effect. Your knees, your feet, your everything, everything just hurts. Like everything just bothers you. So seriously, if you are gaining weight just to be on this fat girl trend, stop it. Stop it because it's not going to work out for you in the end. You have to focus on your health. And all of you fat shaming people, you're not helping the situation. You're just digging them deeper into the rabbit hole. So don't waste the next 43 years of your life trying to gain confidence, gain your health. And I think that this is great news. I hope that this catches on and more and more people start to speak up. Maybe it will even become a trend. 
Maybe Cynical Dude can come up with a new series called Leaving Fat Acceptance Fridays or something like that. Maybe it will get to be that popular. Because then this movement will have what it truly needs, some honesty. So until next time, stay body positive, but also body honest. <laughs>